This is Ulaanbaatar, the capital of the Mongolian People's Republic. Mongolia is one of the ancient countries in Central Asia, bordering the Soviet Union in the north and China in the south. Mongolia, known as the land of blue skies, covers an area of 1,565,000 square kilometers. For centuries, the Mongolian people were oppressed by merciless foreign colonialists and native feudal lords. The victory of the 1921 revolution changed all this. It ushered in democracy, and the free, independent working people of Mongolia have achieved great success in advancing into a socialist agrarian industrial state. A Mongolian proverb says, far away mountains unite clouds and mist. People who live far apart are brought together by interests. The mutual cooperation on many fronts has brought India and Mongolia nearer than the historical links of the past thousands of years. It was no wonder that the government of India decided to make a film on the life and success story of the people of Mongolia. Our film team from the Films Division of the Government of India, in collaboration with our friends from the Mongol Kino, began filming in Ulaanbaatar. we saw nature in her many manifestations. Mongolia's history goes back to thousands of years. The Hunno or Han state, formed in the 3rd century BC, was the first nomad empire in Central Asia. At the end of the 17th century, Mongolia was conquered by the Manchurians. 
the people were subjected to immense class and national oppression. The great October Socialist Revolution evoked a strong national liberation movement in Mongolia. The Mongolian People's Revolutionary Party, founded by Sukh Bator in 1921, led the people in their struggle for freedom and independence. Lenin and Sukh Bator established true fraternal relations between the two countries. On the 11th of July 1921, the People's Government ensured the total victory of the People's Revolution. July 11th of every year is a day of joy and reminiscence for everyone in Mongolia. During our film shooting in Mongolia, our team had the opportunity of taking part in the National Day celebrations. National festival of Nadam features the three games of men as they're called wrestling, archery and horse racing the famous traditional sports of Mongolia Mongolian wrestling has its own rituals and rules. The wrestlers use a series of peculiar tricks called the 13 tricks of man. According to the number of times a wrestler wins, titles are given, like falcon, elephant and lion. Whoever wins more than twice at the Nadam wrestling is titled the giant. Archery is another popular competition among the men, women and children. Nearer the target, men and women sing Ukhai, a choral tune, to cheer the contestants and indicate the target hits.
Mongolian horse racing is certainly exciting. The riders are children from 6 to 10 years of age, galloping to cover a distance of 15 to 30 kilometers, according to the age of the horses. First of the five riders and their horses who reach the winning point get rewards. The horses are titled the Iraq Five. Sukhbathar said, the internal force in the existence and progress of our Mongolian state is the people. Indeed, the people of Mongolia have come a long way. Mongolia's children are her pride and joy. It all begins with great concern for the mother's health. Constant observation and medical care continues to both the mother and child, even after the birth of the baby. Children enjoy special privileges. Social interaction between the children is developed and individual ability is created before preschool education is begun. Every citizen has a right to free education. Children are groomed to develop scientific and technical capabilities. Here you see training imparted to the young in the Young Technology Palace. Tens of thousands of children are trained in various vocations important to the national economy. At the Young Pioneers Palace, they are trained in art and culture.
several summer camps have been established all over the country. Here, Mongolian children get together with others from foreign countries, playing and learning in a positive way and getting to know each other better. In the state public library of Ulaanbaatar, there are over three million books in Mongolian and a host of other languages. Some of the ancient books are unique. There is even a ten-volume Buddhist sutra decorated with gold and silver and weighing more than 450 kilograms. Mongolian University came into being in 1942. Girls and boys of foreign countries have also been studying here. Many faculties offer a wealth of education with facilities for research work. The country's scientific centre is the Academy of Sciences, set up in 1961. With its 14 research institutions, the Academy engages in the elaboration of fundamental and applied problems in all scientific branches. The findings of research are widely applied in updating the national economy. industrial progress of Mongolia, our team visited the industrial cities of Erdinet and Darkhan. Since the foundation of the Republic, more than 500 deposits of mineral resources have been discovered and explored. In the year 1978, the joint Soviet-Mongolian project, the Erdinet Copper Molybdenum Complex, was initiated. Today, it is one of the ten largest enterprises of this kind in the world. Mongolia's ancient art of carpet making is kept alive. Carpets form one of Mongolia's important export items. What a variety of designs. Altai, Altan Bulag, Ulan. Beautiful names for beautiful carpets. Basically an agrarian country, Mongolia's light industries go in for the preparation and processing of animal raw materials for the manufacture of woolen, leather, sheepskin and fur products. Mongolian garments have won many international prizes and are in demand in several countries.
healthy competition among the workers is encouraged to increase productivity. Here at a leather factory, Ganshi Meg is a star worker who has achieved 10 years of production in just five years. There are many others like Ganshi Meg who are the pride of the country. Incidentally, Ganshi Meg is also a member of parliament. city of Darkhan, a visit to the building construction factory. Mongolian cities are well planned with all amenities. Prefabricated structures are used widely. The popular slogan goes, build quickly, magnificently and to last. Well, Mongolia has done just that. We are very grateful that uh, you have invited us here. Mr. Buk Dambi, a journalist, welcomed our film team into his house, proving the Mongolian proverb, happy is he, who often has guests. The Indians got a taste of the traditional Iraq or mare's milk. We are living in Lambert about 1920 years. You please ask him his opinion about uh, the growth of this city of Ulaanbaatar in these 19 years. And Ulaanbaatar, Harajil Amdrakta, Ulaanbaatar in Hovjil Sisig Lilti Nazar, Yogj, Wat Chawa Raizno. Mr. Buk Dambi recounted the different stages of development in Mongolia, especially in Ulaanbaatar, in the place where two decades ago he had seen traditional Mongolian gears. Today stand high-rise buildings. from the hubbub of the cities to the serene, enchanting countryside. One of the important achievements in the socio-economic life of Mongolia has been the formation of state farms and agricultural cooperatives spread all over the country. Modernized methods of agriculture have resulted in high yields all around. Livestock farming is a natural activity in this land of undulating meadows. The finest breeds of sheep, cattle, horses and camels are reared on these farms. Mare's milk is a delicacy in Mongolia and highly nutritious. Mongolian and his horse are inseparable, of course.
the great Gobi Desert left an indelible impression on the minds of the Indian film team. The camels of the Gobi Desert are a rare breed. In a span of 15 years, each camel yields about 400 kilos of fleece, extremely warm and light. On the day our team visited Terelj, a strange coincidence occurred. A group of Mongolian children were dancing to the strains of an Indian film song. unforgettable experience to live in friendly Mongolia, to be a part of the land and her people.